Evening, everyone. This is Tom Cherry Holmes with the FujiNet Project. And I wanted to make a quick video showing the current progress or support for ATX style disk images inside FujiNet. ATX disk images are like ATR disk images in that they encode the sector dump of an entire floppy disk. But unlike ATR disk images, they also encode a lot of extra information such as bad sectors, weak sectors, duplicate sectors, and other things needed to accurately reproduce copy protections that are used on the Atari 8-bit. Like all other disk image formats, these can be used either on local storage or over the network. And for this demonstration, we're actually going to use an ATX disk image that's stored on atariapps.errata.online. You may also notice on the right-hand side of the screen my status display from my development environment showing uh, just the dump and put uh, the dump information out from my FujiNet. We'll select the ATX test folder and we'll select a disk here that works way out and mount it into D1. Do it as read only. And when we're ready, we press option to boot. Now when we press option to boot, it will mount way out. And as it mounts way out, what it's actually going to do is it's going to copy the entire contents of wayout.atx over into the FujiNet's memory. This is done for a number of reasons, but the most important is so that we can accurately preserve the timing that is specified inside the ATX file. This is important for a number of copy protections and trying to request individual sectors and tracks over the network without buffering would make this impossible due to network latency. We'll see it copying the data right here and it takes about eight seconds on my, with my network connection. Once it's there, you can see the sectors loaded in, and the copy protection for way out is at the first of the disk, so it flew by as the bad sectors were done. And because I held down the option key, it bypassed right past the intro screen, but that's fine. We'll just go to the joysticks. Sure. We'll select intro. And just to show that it works, I'll go ahead and play through a quick round. Getting there. Almost there. And there we go. Boom. So there you go. You can see the copy protection working just fine. And, um, it's working pretty well. There are a number of things that we still need to implement. The biggest of which is the accurate timing of the disk rotation so that we can accurately time disk sectors as well as head settling times, basically emulating the timings of a real disk drive as many disk, uh, as many uh, copy protections actually rely on this behavior. All easily doable. And in fact, we're taking a lot of these cues from the uh, code in the S drive max. Now I do want to take a moment here to really thank Oscar Fowler, AKA Jam, Jam for uh, doing the hard work of taking the initial tests that I wrote, uh, looking at the S drive max code, looking at the ATX documentation, mixing it all up in his head, understanding it, digesting it, and coming up with a working implementation that works with our current code base. 
as well as coming up with the architecture of being able to support the different disk image, uh, the different different disk image formats, and the different things that we do back behind the scenes for it. He's been incredibly invaluable on the firmware side of things, really making things work. And I really wanted to thank him for this. To end here, we'll take and load one more particular piece of copy protected software here. I'll take and hit the reset, and we will uh, reset the. Uh, we will reset my system here. See if it will let me do this. Okay, good. And we'll load one more, in this case, Jawbreaker. Let's see. Now I'm loading Jawbreaker here primarily so that you can see there at the end, you'll see at the bottom of the, t of the debug dump, the bad sectors that come in as part of the copy protection process. And again, the disk image is cached over on the FujiNet before actually mounting. Now, if you'll notice the last two command entries in the list, you'll notice that these are reads to non-existent sectors. That is, sectors that should be on the disk, but actually have no sector marker for them. They are blank sectors entirely. They were not found in the list, so we simply return the fact that these were bad sectors and the copy protection would work. If we don't return these bad statuses, the game will not finish loading. So, I mean, with that, it's coming along, and I wanted to give you guys a good little demonstration of where things were at this particular moment in time. Uh, a lot more is coming, and uh, the next big milestone is going to be if we can load an Electronic Arts game, or a game from Synapse or Broderbund. That will be a big milestone forward. So until next time, guys, have fun.